Madison Middle. Thank you, school board, for all your support. We appreciate all you do. Thank you for your support. We appreciate all you do. Thank you for what you do for our school. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support in everything that you do. Thank you. Madison County Board of Education, thank you for your support. We appreciate all you do, so thanks for Madison Middle. We'll now call to order the meeting of the Madison County Board of Education. First on our agenda is the reorganization of the board. Item 2A on the agenda is to nominate a 2020 board chairman. At this time, I entertain nominations for chairman of the Madison County Board of Education for the 2020 calendar year. So I would like to uh, nominate Samantha Burford. She has served the board for the past three years with enthusiasm and dedication. Um, even though she had some challenges at the beginning of her term, she served with a tremendous amount of grace when others might have stepped aside. Um, she has nothing but the best interest and the love for these students and this staff. So it would be a pleasure to have her serve as chair. So I nominate Samantha. Okay, thank you. The recommended motion is to nominate Samantha Burford for chairman of the Madison County Board of Education for the 2020 calendar year. Do I have a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Brock to, to nominate Ms. Burford. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Rutherford. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 2B on the agenda is to cease nominations and elect the board chairman. The recommendation, the recommended motion of cease nominations for the 2020 board chairman and that of Samantha Rutherford be elected by acclamation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Do we have a sec second? Second. second. Second by Mr. Rutherford. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 2C on the agenda is to nominate the 2020 board vice chair. At this time, we entertain nominations for the vice chairman of the Madison County Board of Education for the 2020 calendar year. And I'd like to nominate Ms. Lori Cobb. She has shown tremendous uh, concern and interest in this board, and I think she'll do a great job. So I made the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 2D on the agenda to cease, nomination, cease nominations and elect vice chairman. The recommended motion to cease nominations for 2020 vice chairman and that of Lori Cobb be elected by acclamation. Do I have that motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Rutherford. Do, do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Burford. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now just give us a moment to switch seats. All right, so next up on the agenda is the vision statement. Is there a volunteer that would like to read that? Sure. Ms. Brock. Madison County Schools, in partnership with the community, strives to equip educators and students with the skills to lead by example, develop and speak with unique voice, and explore their academic curiosity to make a positive impact on our community and world. The next is our showcase. All right, for our showcase tonight, our first school that we have up is Glen Marshall Elementary. Turn to the page here. Glen Marshall <laughs> Elementary fifth graders will be presenting their Living Wax Museum. This is a project that fifth graders look forward to each year. Uh, students select which person in history they would like to portray. They research that person and they write a first person narrative speech that informs visitors about their life. Then they dress up like that person and present their speeches to students in other grade levels, as well as parents, family members, 
and other people in the community. And I visited there a couple of times during this time. It's really, it's really neat. Tonight, five of our fifth graders will be presenting their Living Wax Museum project. Thank you. I'm Lisa Skelly. I'm the Library Media Specialist at Glen Marshall. We've been doing this program since 2007, which was the very first year Glen Marshall was in existence. It's evolved a little over time, and we've gotten a few more 21st century skills in with the process. Before we get started, though, they all have a gift that has been made by the students of our school for each of you for School Board Appreciation Month. So go deliver real quick and then come back. <laughs> This is such an exciting project for our students. The fifth grade students often ask us the first day of school, when do we get to start? <laughs> they often ask us the very first day of fifth grade when they get to start on their Wax Museum project. They really look forward to it. So our first... Um, Visitor today is the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, played by Samaj Dashiel. I always loved basketball when I was little, and I still love it today. I always practiced and believed I could get in the NBA. I eventually did for 20 historical seasons. I was an NBA Hall of Famer and scored 38,387 points in 20 seasons. I still lead the NBA in points. Who am I? I am Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I was originally named Ferdinand Lou Alcindor Jr. I was born in Manhattan, New York in 1947. I had a girl's birth that made me impressive five foot eight tall at just nine years old. I didn't stop growing until I reached seven foot two. The height made me a strong basketball player. I was drafted to the Milwaukee Bucks in 1969, round one, pick one. After six seasons with Milwaukee, I led the team to our first NBA championship <coughs> at age 24 in 1971. The same year, I converted to Isom and changed my name. As a player, whenever I was down in a game, I always kept my cool and played on. That's what made me such a great player. I was the very first NBA player to play in the league for 20 seasons. I led every team I played for to the national championship, from Power Memorial to CLA to Milwaukee, and last but not least, the Lakers. I received many honors in my life, including being inducted to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1995 and receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2016 from President Barack Obama. Not only am I one of the greatest basketball players of all time, I also studied martial arts with Bruce Lee. I've been to movies and I've written several books. In fact, my book about the Harlem Renaissance was later made into a documentary. I've also been an assistant coach for several NBA teams. I was diagnosed with leukemia in 2009, and I felt hard, finally being declared cancer-free in 2011. Some of my famous and inspiring quotes are, you can't win unless you learn how to lose, and one man can be a crucial ingredient on a team, but one man cannot make a team. Coleman, portrayed by Anastasia Commodore. Who was the first African-American woman to learn fire plane? It's me, Bessie Coleman. I was, I, was born in, I was born in Texas, 1892. My family was very poor, so I started working when I was very young. But my mom wanted me to go to school, so she worked very hard. I, I went to college in Oklahoma in 1910. While there, I read about pilots and airplanes. Then I knew I had to fly. I want to go to um, I want to go to a flight school in the United States, but they would accept me because of my race and gender. But I want to give up that easily, so I learned French and applied to school, a flight school in in France. And by 1920, a, a school in France accepted me. I earned my pilot license in 19, 1921. I became I became the first African American woman to learn to fly. I went back to the United States, even though I was famous. I still couldn't find a job. So I decided to open my school for African Americans, <coughs> African Americans to learn to fly. The only problem was I needed money to do it. I ended up to go, go I ended up going back to France for three months to earn, earn my son pilot. I I, be, I became a uh, before me stunts in 1922. Same, I worked very hard, saving every single penny to reach my dream. Unfortunately. I never get a chance to open my school. In 1926, 
While performing my stunts, I fell out my plane. I died as a result of injuries. I was just 34 years old. In 1929, the school I wanted to open is finally built in California. They honored my legacy by naming the school after me. I am Bessie Coleman. I worked hard to be um, the first African woman pilot. I proved that this is wrong. The way I follow my dreams inspires people around the world today. I proved that African American woman could indeed fly a plane. Next we have Whoopi Goldberg, portrayed by Abby Miller. An actress can only play a woman. I'm an actor and I can play anything. Hi, I'm Karen Elaine Johnson, or as everybody knows me as Whoopi Goldberg. I was born on November 13, 1955. I started out as a kid with a brother raised by our mother. As I got older, I suffered from dyslexia, which then interfered with my studies. So I had to drop out of school at the age of 17 to pursue a career in comedy and theater. I starred in a popular one-woman production in 1983. And in 1985, I won a Grammy Award for Best Comedy Recording. As a result of my success in theater, director Steven Spielberg heard of me and cast me as the female lead in his movie, The Color Purple. I won my first Golden Globe and was nominated for an Oscar for this role. My part in this movie launched a highly visible acting career, and I would go on to play in more than 150 film and television productions. I won an Academy Award in 1991 for, for my performance in Go Ghost, and in 2007, I embarked on a lengthy run as moderator of the TV talk show, The View. I am also known for being among a very small group of people who have achieved EJOT status, winning an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award. Today I'm an award-winning comedian, actress, and human rights advocate, as well as the longtime host of the talk show, The View. You can catch me most weekday mornings as I share my view on current events. Next we have Audrey Hepburn portrayed by Daniston Flynn. Have you ever heard of a girl who is a film and fashion icon? A girl who is not only an actress in movies, but also a humanitarian activist who worked in some of the poorest communities in Africa, South America, and Asia? Well, that's me, Audrey Catherine Rooston, but you probably know me as Audrey Hepburn. I was born in 1929 in Brussels, Belgium. As a girl growing up during World War II, I was greatly affected by the horrific sights I saw inflicted upon the Jewish people. I had to go by the name Edda Van Hemstra because having an English sounding name was considered dangerous. In my early life, I studied ballet and had hopes of becoming a prima ballerina. However, that didn't work out, so I began work as a model and actress, appearing in roles in the theater and movies. I had my first big break at age 22 when I starred in the Broadway production of Gigi. After my big break in the Broadway production of Gigi, I rose to stardom with my role in the comedy Roman Holiday in 1953. I became the first actress to win three prestigious awards for one role when I won an Oscar, a Golden Globe Award, and a BAFTA Award for my role in that film. From there, I starred in several famous movies. You might have heard of a couple in particular, Breakfast at Tiffany's or My Fair Lady. Later in my life, I devoted much of my time to the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, Working as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF, I traveled to some of the poorest communities in Africa, South America, and Asia between 1988 and 1992. I devoted much of my time and money to help children in those areas. I received the Presidential Medal of Freedom and recognition of my work with UNICEF in 1992. A month later, I died from cancer of the appendix at age 63. My legacy of being a talent perf talented performer known for my beauty, elegance, grace, and style as well as my work as a humanitarian still lives on. Before we have our last character, I would like to say a huge thank you to the fifth grade team at Glen Marshall because this is not a uh, one person task. We all jump in together and over the years that we've done this, the 12 years we've done this, they have 
always stepped in and made sure it was a very positive, rewarding experience for our students. So thank you to them. And last and certainly not least, we have Steve Irwin, portrayed by Allison Hunter. Now, where's that crocodile? Oh, hello, I'm wildlife expert conservationist Steve Irwin, also known as the Crocodile Hunter. I was born 1962 in Melbourne, Australia. As a child, I was perky and loved the eight dolls. I got my love from my parents, Bob and Lynn. When I was a few years old, my parents and I opened the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park. At the age of six, I got the best birthday gift ever, a 12-foot-long python. I began handling crocodiles when I was just nine years old, after my father had trained me. In 1991, I took control of the park and renamed it Australia Zoo. Five years later, I released my new show, The Crocodile Hunter, which was a wildlife documentary. It was the highest rated series on Animal Planet, broadcast in more than 130 countries and viewed by more than 500 million people around the world. I was known for my close encounters with crocodiles and other dangerous animals. I have been praised for introducing many people to the natural world, showing them how wonderful and exciting it is. In 1997, I was on a fishing trip with my father and I discovered a new species, a turtle. I was given the honour of naming it and I named it Erwin's Turtle after my family. I love sharing my love of the natural world through wildlife documentaries. I was working on a show called Ocean's Deadliest when tragedy struck. A bull stingray stabbed my hat while I was filming. I died September 4th, 2006 as a result of the injury. Even though I died, my legacy lives on in the hearts of those who still want to preserve the environment through my pack, which my wife Terry still runs, and my children, Bob and Mindy Irwin. You might have seen my daughter Bindi's television show, Bindi, the Jungle Girl. I'm remembered for my show and conservation of the world. Now, it's time to... Thank you very much. That was great. I appreciate it, uh, guys. Thank you. Glenn Marshall Elementary. Thank you, Ms. Scully. Thank you. All right. Our next school for our showcase tonight is B. Michael Caudill Middle School. And uh, Caudill Middle School tonight is going to share two elements of its arts program, the band and art education. So we're going to start with the Spartan Band. Uh, the Spartan Band consists of over 175 students. The program is highly regarded throughout the state for music education receiving only distinguished state assessment ratings in all three grade levels every year since the school's inception. Additionally, the band has been chosen twice to what many consider the highest honor a middle school band can receive, and that is performing at the KMEA State Professional Development Conference. The band annually gives over eight concerts each school year, uh, many of which are in cooperation with our local community uh, entities such as the Halloween Hoedown, the Holiday Music at Meyer, and Veterans Day programs. Lastly, our band program competes in national and regional music showcase competitions each spring, having most recently received Reserve Grand Champion in 2019 and Grand Champion in 2018. Tonight, for the showcase, we have 7th grade alto saxophonist uh, Solomon Nakchoe performing a traditional jazz selection titled Ogden Avenue by Greg Fishman.
Excellent. Thank you, Solomon. And now we also have the uh, B. Michael Caldwell Middle School art class. Um, the art program at Caudill strives to provide students with an art education that equips them with not only a love for the arts, but also critical thinking and creative skills that they can carry with them outside of the classroom and throughout their lives. The art program focuses on challenging students in such a way that they grow and learn through the process. With each unit and project, students are challenged to brainstorm, create, modify, and reflect on progress and growth. The following pieces are just two examples of student work that explore this process. And I think we're going to find out a little more about those. Mr. Hey, you are. Miss uh, Reed, our art teacher, is away on school business, so she couldn't be here with, her, or with us, so I'll be a stand-in. The first piece, and we chose to present or showcase the work in this fashion. This one's small. The, the next one that we're going to show is a little bit larger, not as easy to bring. The first piece is a grid drawing created by a seventh grader, uh, Ashley Hastings. During this unit, when the art was uh, created, students are challenged to use the grid method to recreate an image of their choosing <coughs> and enlarge their image from one inch by one inch grid into a two by two grid. This project, while teaching the fine art skills of shading and pencil drawings, focuses on seeing things from different perspectives and learning to break down more complicated tasks into smaller, more manageable pieces. Students are encouraged to work square by square uh, so that they can focus on individual lines, shapes, and values rather than becoming overwhelmed with the entire image. So a nice work, uh, presumably a mighty Spartan. All right, our next piece, this is the larger one. I'm looking to make sure the student's not here. The second piece is a collaborative abstract piece entitled... Anyone? Anyone? I spy. I spy. Well done, Mr. Gillum. That's why you are superintendent. Uh, <laughs> it's created by eighth graders, several, Dylan Curry, Amber Harvey, Boston Collins, and DJ Sexton. Uh, for this project, students are, were given a canvas that consisted of only a base color and were asked to work together to create an abstract piece that reflected all of their personalities through color. Where's Freud when you need him, right? Uh, students were challenged with experimenting with different paint mediums, application processes, and working collaboratively to decide what colors would be used and when the painted should be considered finished. So our art folks at Cotton Middle School. Awesome. Thank you. And now I also think uh, Cottle has some uh, uh, gifts and, and uh, some honoring uh, ways to honor our school board members as well. Good evening. My name is Jordan Keith. I teach eighth grade English language arts at the Michael Cottle Middle School. And I have a wonderful group of students here who have created a presentation to share with you all today. So they are very excited to share that with you all and introduce themselves. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. Um, my name is Aiden Campbell and I'm an eighth grader at Cottle Middle School. So I, um, our presentation is over 10 things that our board members do in, for the district. And we just wanted to thank you all for everything you do. And we'll further elaborate on that in our presentation. Hey, uh, my name is Will Deem. And we're, I'm going to be talking about the board members and how they set the district goals. Um, board members uh, collaborate to set the vision that our district strives to reach at each day. Madison County's vision guides everything that our district's leaders do. I'm Sydney Hall. Board members also set goals for our district. Along with setting our district's mission, board members constantly evaluate our schools and set goals for improvement. Board members use data, research, and information provided by the staff and students in the district to assist them in knowing what our district needs and how to help us improve. I'm Grady Brown, and another thing that board members do is they support our students in Madison County. Members of the board visit each school in the district to make sure that we all have what we need and find out what types of projects that we're working on so that we can continue our learning. And members of the boards also take the time to attend community events such as sporting events, concerts, competitions, and showcases. 
Um, I'm Jonah Day, and another thing that board members do is they handle and allocate materials for our district. Board members handle and allocate resources in the district to ensure that our classrooms have everything they need to run smoothly. For a school to operate efficiently, efficiently, the building must have the correct amount of required materials. Board members work hard to make that happen. I'm Kaylee Jones, and let's not forget that board members strive to give students the better possible learning environment. The board members make sure we have the necessary learning materials that will help us explore, gain, and retain knowledge in more proactive ways. The resources that board members handle also provide us with alternative means of learning and opportunities to explore subjects that interest us in creative ways. Um, board members value us in our educational growth. The board members make sure that our needs are at the center of everything that they do and every, every decision that they make. Thank you all for working so hard to make sure that our needs are met. We are able to grow and learn because you listen to us and consider our needs while working to help our district constantly improve. Board members review and revise procedures and policies. Our district's procedures and policies allow us to learn in a creative, supportive, and safe environment. Board members review and revise these procedures and policies to make sure that they are up to date and beneficial to everyone in the district. Board members serve our community. Members of the board dedicate time all year to help Madison County be the best it can be. That means constantly evaluating our teachers, leaders, buildings, and procedures, and making changes when, when, you, when you see opportunities for growth. Board members also work to understand us. Board members take time to listen to our feedback, desires, and our needs. And they make an effort to understand the challenges that our the, uh, students face. Understanding our challenges allows members of the board to more effectively support us and our community in all the ways that you do. Board members inspire positive change. Board members live out the vision that they set for our district by equipping us and our teachers with the skills that we need to be leaders in our schools and communities. Board members also give us opportunities to share our voices and explore our academic interests. Thank you all for supporting us and helping us learn how to make a positive impact on our community. Now here is a video of some of our students. Madison County board members. Thank you for setting our vision. Thank you for making sure we have what we need. Thank you for supporting us. For making sure our school has effective procedures. Thank you for making sure our school has safe policies. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for working hard for us. Thank you. 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 Thank you for keeping us at the center of everything that you do. Thank you all again for that opportunity. I think they nailed that. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. You might want to take that to one of those uh, KSBA training sessions. <laughs> pretty good. I need that with me all the time. You have something else? Yeah, we have one more thing. Okay, one more thing. All right, that's awesome. As a, I'm Shane Richardson, and I teach seventh grade at Cottle Middle School, seventh grade language arts. And um, as a seventh grade teacher, I know that group of eighth graders is a really hard act to follow. I had them last year, and I'm really <laughs> proud of them. Um, but we've been focusing on writing skills this year, and our group of seventh graders this year wrote some postcards for you all just as a, a note of thanks. And so I'd like to present those to you all today. That's so cute. thank you again. Thank wow. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've never felt so much love. This has been, this has been fantastic. So I guess now we're on to staff recognition. And the first uh, staff recognition piece for tonight is the December Food Service Award. And that goes to Boonesboro Elementary. Brittany and her staff created an exciting atmosphere for students during the holidays. From decorations in the cafeteria 
to special food they serve the students. The Boonesboro staff went above and beyond to show the students, parents, and staff that they care. Congratulations to Boonesboro Elementary Food Service staff. Next, we have um, a, uh, the Bechtel Parsons Bluegrass uh, Awards. Tonight, Madison County Schools will receive a $10,000 donation from Bechtel Parsons Bluegrass to fund innovative classroom activities focused on science, engineering, technology, and math. This donation, which has been an annual donation since 2008, will provide 10 teachers with $1,000 with $1, each from Bechtel Parsons Bluegrass for activities to promote student-centered learning. Since 2008, Bechtel Parsons Bluegrass has donated more than $115,000 in teacher grants for student scholarships, for student scholarship funds to Madison County Schools. And I'm going to applaud that. The board and the district would certainly like to thank Bechtel Parsons Bluegrass for their generosity and for their support. So this year, the recipients are, and as your name is called, I know several of the, these folks are here, so as your name's called, come on up. Uh, first is Elizabeth Ward, Special Education. Next, we have Shelby Poole from Silver, Silver Creek Elementary. Shelby here. <laughs> Brittany Friel from, Mattis, uh, from Foley Middle. From Madison Kindergarten Academy, we have Jenny Bogey and Candace Young. From Glenn Marshall Elementary, Sarah Moore. From Daniel Boone Elementary, Jill Van Dyke. <clears throat> Next is Mr. Ray Burns from Ferris Town Middle. From Madison Southern, Dina Abbott. From Whitehall, Peggy Blankenship. And from Madison Middle, Whitney Lips. Mm -hmm. 
chick in the middle would be oh, great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I humbly apologize. <laughs> And then the Madison Central Band also wants to present our board with a, uh, I guess it's called a drum insert, is that correct? Drum head. Drum head from the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Well, we got to get your picture for that. Sure. Yes. Can we do it real fast? They said that was the yeah. This has been in Mr. Jackie's office. Yeah. Uh, artwork. Yep. One, two, three. Nice. Thank you. That's cute. We certainly appreciate the band for presenting that. And then uh, the last item I have is, uh, as you've heard, it's School Board uh, Board of Education Appreciation Month. So uh, I do have a proclamation here. So it's a proclamation honoring the members of the Madison County Board of Education during School Board Recognition Month, January of 2020. Whereas our community values of quality education as a vital step along the pathway to success for our children. And whereas Becky Cole, Samantha Burford, Beth Brock, Lori Cobb, and Brandon Rutherford contribute greatly to this community through their service on the Madison County Board of Education. And whereas these decision makers are responsible for maintaining strong, effective budgetary oversight, high standards for employment, and a safe, well-managed set of school facilities. And whereas these board members are serving our community with integrity, honor, and a commitment to our children's futures. And whereas January 2020 marks Kentucky's observation of their contributions through School Board Recognition Month. Therefore, I, David Gillum, do hereby proclaim the month of January 2020 throughout the Madison County School District as School Board Recognition Month and urge everyone to honor Becky Cole, Samantha Burford, Beth Brock, Lori Cobb, and Brandon Rutherford for their service. Thank you. Is that all? All right. So I believe that's all of our recognition as the room clears out. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to audience comments, and I'm going to ask if there's anyone from the audience. No, none tonight? All right. So we'll move on to our consent agenda. Are there any questions about the consent agenda? Okay, so the items that we uh, need to approve tonight on the consent agenda are the minutes of the December 12th meeting, claims, the record of the superintendent's personnel actions, leave of absence, the approval of the board's participation in actual expenses for the 2020 conference events, the 2020 Board of Education calendar of meetings, and the following out-of-state field trips. The Madison Central High School cheerleader trip to Orlando, Florida, February 4th through the 10th. The Madison Southern High School cheerleader trip to Orlando, Florida, February 5th through the 11th and the Foley Middle 7th and 8th grade band trip to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee on April the 25th. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is our action agenda. 8A is to amend the 2019-2020 school year calendar. Right, we have Mr. Neely coming up. He's going to uh, give us just a quick update on that. Good evening. Uh, the, uh, the change that we're going to, uh, that I'm proposing is uh, the 20th Martin Luther King Day. We have it slated uh, as a PD day, and I need to amend that to a holiday. So, um, that's what I'm requesting. We, we have two different uh, calendars, one that was posted on the 
website and one that was sent to KDE. So the correct one was sent, and the one on the website was incorrect, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll get that corrected as soon as this gets fixed. And I think you may have misspoken that. I think you said holiday. It's just actually going to be an off day. Off day. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. K day is what we call it, but it's, it's an off day. That's correct. And then we'll come and amend this calendar again as we start to, to get weather. We may, we may not, but uh, typically we will. So the only change is the 20th from a professional development day to an off day. If you have any questions. All right, if no questions, then we need a motion. So moved. And is there a second? I'll second. And I know you guys used to say that, so I know that I should be saying <laughs> things. But I agree with you that it is hard to listen to go both ways. So, okay. Write their um, names down. It happens yeah. all the time. I was at fiscal court the other day, and they messed it up all the time. <laughs> so it is hard to see now how they say it's yeah, that's easy right. to do. All right. So now we vote, right? Yes. Okay. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next is 8B, to accept the SFCC offer of assistance. Okay. So the, uh, the SFCC is a school facilities construction commission. They, the state comes up with need and, uh, uh, for the state, and they divvy out a certain amount of money. It's based off of our need. This, uh, this amount that we have tonight is $61,902. That's a uh, uh, that's just one of our uh, several different um, <coughs> forms of, uh, of funding that come in specifically for facilities, uh, but we do have to take action. It's just routine uh, take action in order to accept that. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. All right. By Ms. Coyle and Mr. Rutherford. And now the vote. Aye. 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 <laughs> I don't really know how you always ask that. So Okay. So all those in favor, thank you. There we go. I do it differently. Yeah. So, it's kind of crazy. All right. I'm new. All right. So 8C, declare technology surplus. It's a list of equipment that we've taken out of service and you declare it surplus and we change the policy so that we can actually destroy this, the part of this that has personal, personally identifiable information and we intend to do that and sell the rest to an electronic recycler. Can I ask Israel, how do you destroy that? What, what's the means of the destruction? A big giant metal shredder. You use the shredder, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we get a report back from them, they tell us the serial number of everything they destroyed and match it to the equipment that we give them so we verify that it's all been destroyed so awesome mm -hmm. great any further questions okay so i need a motion to declare the technology surplus as presented so moved second all right there's been a motion by miss brock and a second by miss coyle all those in favor aye. aye all right moving to 8d declare serving lines as surplus we have three brand new Serving lines at our middle schools, uh, Foley, Clarkmore, and Madison Middle. Uh, brought some of our managers to tears to receive those, so thank you for that. We would like to uh, surplus those. We have several different things we're going to do with those. Um, some, uh, we've got other districts that would like to have pieces of those. Um, we're going to replace the serving line at Bellevue with one of the serving lines uh, that we removed because it's a little better than what Bellevue has. We're looking at a meeting with the principal tomorrow at Central. We're looking at creating a classroom where we can uh, train some of our special education students so we can start growing our own. Uh, so while we don't have to surplus those to keep them in-house, part of that would be uh, possibly used for that. Um, and then if there's any parts off these, we're going to uh, take all the parts we can to, to put on some of the older serving lines that we have and then scrap the rest. All right, so we need a motion to declare the serving lines as surplus as presented. So moved. Second. Either one, I guess. All right, a motion's been made by Mr. Rutherford and a second by Ms. Brock. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next we have the wellness report with Mr. Anderson again. Here I am. Uh, the, the district has a wellness policy, uh, and each year we review that. Uh, this year we 
created a pamphlet that we're going to hand out uh, with your approval. Um, just talking about and highlighting some of the wonderful things that we're trying to do in the district to keep our students healthy, uh, such as buying farm to school, those type things. Uh, so you have a copy of the pamphlet in front of you. Uh, if you have any suggestions, questions, be more than happy to answer those for you. I thought it was very well done. Very informative. Thank you. I've got a good crew that works for me, so. <laughs> All right, so no action required on the wellness No action report. required. Just wanted to uh, give it to you for uh, you to look at, uh, see if there's anything you want us to add, uh, any suggestions you have for us to uh, maybe add in the future to make our students healthier. That's great. I think you're teaching all of us. We're trying. <laughs> and many others. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Right. We appreciate thank that you. very much. Next, we have 8F, the instruction report, reading recovery, with Dr. Amy Smith. Hello. Jeannie, right here? Okay. Good. Thanks for giving me a couple of minutes tonight. I've timed it. It's only five, I promise. Um, every year... <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Um, <laughs> as you guys know, okay, Jeannie, the clicker's not. Oh, there you go. As you guys know, our reading recovery teachers work with students grades K through three, providing intensive literacy interventions. Last year, we served around 826 students in the county, and 198 of those were served in reading recovery, which is our one-on-one -on -one intervention. Since 2005, over 13,000 children have received intervention from these highly trained teachers, almost 3,000 in reading recovery. That number actually kind of blew my mind, even though I was there for every minute of it. It's kind of amazing. Every year, we copiously collect and analyze every bit of data about our students. I have a mountain of it, but I'm going to share three particularly important data points with you. Our overall success rates, the text level reading growth, and then success rates for targeted subgroups, which is the first year we've actually run that report. This first table shows, I showed you last year, our success rates, which means students who successfully exited the program and did not need further intervention from 2015 to 2018. And Ms. Coyle, I don't know if you remember, but I sort of facetiously said, hey, maybe I'll come back next year and say, we made it past, eight, we made it to 90%, you remember? We did not make it to 90%. I was looking at that thinking, okay. We made it to 92%. Oh, yes. I know, pretty shocking and exciting. 92% um, for perspectives far exceeds national norms. Um, and it gave our site actually one of the highest success rates in the entire nation, number three. Um, that was pretty amazing stats for this little town from Kentucky. So I was quite proud of it. It is truly a testament to our teachers' skill and their commitment. And it's really even more significant when you realize every single one of those percentage points is a profound impact on a child and a family, and actually probably on a teacher too. One of the most important ways we evaluate our growth and our success is through text reading level. Our goal is ultimately for our children to read on grade level like their peers do, the ones who don't have trouble. This um, chart shows two student groups. The red line is reading recovery. The green line is a national random sample. The gray line is our district goal at, at three points in the year, fall, mid-year, and end of the year, based upon national norms. As you can see, looking at the red line, our reading recovery students obviously come in far below both their, um, the national sample and the goals. But by mid-year, look at that accelerated progress. That was during a time when most of them were receiving their interventions, well, all of these students. They not only closed the gap, you can barely see it, they exceeded the district average and the national random sample, which is skewed high. But what is way cooler when you think about it is that happened in around 60 lessons or 30 hours of instruction. The most significant part of this is actually what happens after, though, because that part from the mid to the end is after instruction. 
And that means they went back into excellent classroom instruction with supportive teachers. And because of their time in reading recovery, they continued to grow. And in fact, we did a little victory lap that at that barely at the end of the year, they were still just ahead of the national um, random sample. So that was extraordinarily exciting for us. That was a major goal. Although our interventions occur outside of accountability grades, we still consider our own responsibility for fostering the conditions for those students to do well in those grades on KPREP. So I actually got the data analyst at Ohio State to run this report for me as a favor, and we were delighted when we looked at it. We had never looked at it before last May. We were delighted to see the consistency in those results across those subpopulations. That second language learner um, data point, though, bothered me. That's still 12 percentage points higher than the national average, but it's just far enough away from those other that, that it bothered us. So this year, we have a really intensive focus on shoring up our own professional expertise for that group of students. And I want to say, especially, I think Mr. Reister was here or is here, we could not do it without the ELL staff in the district. They are impossibly supportive of us. All the outcomes we've shown you tonight clearly are the result of some incredible teachers, both classroom and intervention and support staff and amazing principals and parents. Um, but I, I've thought about this a lot, and um, I think it has to do with one more thing, and that's the culture in this county. And I want to share a story to, to illustrate that. Last year, when I got this data in in May, I was so excited. I literally ran upstairs to find Mrs. Hunter or Mr. Gillum and Mr. Gillen was the unfortunate one I got to first, and he was in the hallway, and I completely interrupted what he was doing, and sorry about that, but I was really excited. And I, I, I yes, I mean, I interrupted him and just stopped him and said, we cut to 92%. And he responded in his very Mr. Gillen way. He just looked at me and said, well done. Now let's keep it going. And I said, Mr. Gillum, just sort of like, to myself and to no one, do you think we could get to 100? And he looked at me and goes, well, let's try. And I thought first, oh, of course, duh, Amy, let's try, yes, you know, it's so obvious. But then I thought, man, how empowering to work someplace where the ethos is, take a big risk, try something hard. Even if you don't make it, who cares, let's try. And that is exactly what happened at the end of last year, that ethos of let's try led us to come up with a pilot program um, to include classroom teachers in this training model. Um, we, with support of the University of Kentucky Training Center and also Mrs. Hunter, we became one of the first two districts in Kentucky this year to start to include classroom teachers in this model. I don't know why it took us so long, but without that ethos, I don't know if we would have ever gotten there. Mrs. Hunter helped us recruit a training class of 13 K-1 classroom teachers and three special education teachers who come to class with me once a week um, after school on their own time, um, voluntarily. And then they, they find time during their day, I don't know how, to work with a student one-on-one -on -one to really learn how to do these, these procedures. I don't know, I have no idea how they're doing this, but they're remarkable. And I wanted just to express how much I admire them and how impressed I have been and how much they've challenged me this year and my expertise and my knowledge, which is an amazingly great thing. So I want to close with this. I am so grateful to share this work. If you gave me all night, I'd talk about reading recovery all night, but I won't. Um, I don't know if I can stand here and promise when I come back next year, I'm going to show you that we got to 93. I hope but I'm not gonna promise that, but here's what I am gonna say. I am sure that when I come back next year, in January, I will have many more stories and good things to share about a group of remarkable teachers and kids who always keep trying, even when it's really, really hard. So on, on behalf of those teachers and kids, thank you all for your support and your interest um, that's Michelle being one of them. Um, I cannot tell you what it means to us. I'm happy to answer questions if you have them. 
I look forward to this every single year. Hey, at least I, I didn't cry this year. Oh, <laughs> that close. Oh my God. But, but you make us I know, cry. that close. I was right on the edge because of Because this, to me, is one of the most exciting programs that we have in this county because we know if students can't read at an <coughs> early level, they're not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. So the impact that your team and the teachers involved have on the future success of these students is truly invaluable. Mm -hmm. I am, so, and as a board, we are so, so appreciative of the job this, t this whole team does, but they don't do it without the support of their enthusiastic leader, mm -hmm. and you do an amazing job. Thank you. And we are so appreciative. I could listen to you talk all night about it. Oh, listen, so. Beth, after the meeting, let's hang out, and I will tell you all about okay. it. But um, <laughs> let me just say that I think one of the things I've learned over time is how much the collaboration among everybody in those buildings matters. I think we used to operate in a silo down the hall, and one of the things that's making us profoundly better is we are all together now on, on grade-level teams and schools, and it's kind of an amazing thing to be part of it. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Tony, that's going to be hard to follow. We have our construction report from Mr. Tony Thomas. I remember a year ago having to follow her then as well. <laughs> I'll try to make it exciting. Uh, not much to talk about. Um, show the parking lot, picture of the parking lot for the last time. Probably bring you a BG4 to close out the project next month. Um, from all reports, it's still functioning well, so everything good on that front. Uh, the Madison Central High School roof is now complete, so these are completed pictures that I'm showing you. I tried to get back and show as much roof as I possibly could, bright and shining with the sun in the background there. Um, about 45, 50,000 square feet, a lot of roof there. Um, a couple of times that they had some stain tile issues during construction, but since it's all been wrapped up and the uh, roofers have come back in and put some new ceiling tile in. Nothing has been reported since, so I, I, th I think we're in good shape. Uh, they just owe us a, an inspection and a warranty now. Um, here's a couple of more pictures just of, of the good quality and good quality craftsmanship of the, of, of the metal. Um, there's looking down on the cafeteria. Um, there's looking the other way on the cafeteria. And the only other thing to report, well, I'm sorry, any questions on the roof? or the parking lot for that matter. Um, on the ATCs, uh, after our meeting last time, and I don't know if Dr. Gill maybe put a call into somebody, but <laughs> all of a sudden we got, had BG1 approvals and the schematic plan approvals on both of the career centers, so that's moving uh, right along as well. And we've had several meetings since then, and I need to plan another meeting with you to show you where we are. Um, so things are going well on that front also. Fabulous, fabulous. That's exciting. Fabulous. It's very exciting. That's one of the most when, exciting projects. When do you on. think that will be to the point of sending it out for bids? I'm Just hoping. Guess. Well, I'm hoping April, May. Spring. That's, that's yeah. Sweet. That's that would be best case scenario. Maybe. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is our finance report with Mr. Mark Woods. Welcome. Good evening. As of December 31st, we ended with a reconciled balance of $31,905,112.71. Uh, you can see there, compared to this time last year, it's considerably down. Uh, we talked about it last month, tax collections. I went in and looked today. At this point, last year through the end of December, we collected $19 million, $19.16 million in taxes. Uh, as of this report, we've collected $5.5 million. So uh, all of the, uh, the issues with the tax bills and everything going out and the delay in that, it, as you can see there, it has hit our balance quite a bit, but we are okay. We have plenty of money in the bank and we are rolling right along and looking forward to those collections coming in soon. 
Of the reconciled balance, we have $967,990.65 left in investments. Uh, most of those investments, they've been going down. It was where we had to let the uh, investments through PFM mature. Uh, we still do have one local CD. I'm in the process, started it uh, actually this week, of uh, getting paperwork together to purchase some local CDs. Uh, we will be looking at purchasing those through Fork Bank. Uh, they've been very gracious to work with us. They are offering the board a very, very nice rate. Um, we are getting to set our terms, how many months we want to invest the CDs. And they are not going to change the rate based on the number of months that we're going to uh, put money in with them. So they are going to back those with securities. So they'll be fully pledged against. We're working on the uh, collateral agreements and other things. We were working on those today, getting signatures and everything together to be able to invest with them. Currently, market rates are running right around 1.5 or just a little bit lower for um, CDs, and they are agreeing to give us 2%. So uh, very thankful to them and their commitment to be a community partner with Madison County Schools, and uh, we will be working on that. So we should start seeing our income start going up, our investment income. And uh, right now, we're going to take the money that we have received in um, tax revenue and we're going to deposit that with them in CDs and then the other money as it comes in we'll decide if we want to invest more from there or if we want to hold it for cash flow purposes. <coughs> in your board packet you also had a copy of the balance sheet and revenue and expense report for December. I have went through it, looked through it, uh, we seem to be on track, uh, everything seems to be hitting proportional to where it should be at this time uh, in accordance with the budget. So I do not have any concerns with our uh, revenue and expense report at this time. Any questions? Mr. Woods, can you remind, remind us again, what is the percentage that we pay the Sheriff's Department? For the One collection? and a half percent. One and a half. Okay. Yes. And that is set by uh, statute that it's um, you pay the lesser of their actual costs or a percentage range up to 4%. One and a half percent is the lowest on the percentage range and it is um, actually, I don't think their actual cost of collections equal to one and a half percent. I just couldn't remember, thank you. Any other questions? All right, if not, we need a motion to approve the monthly financial reports as presented. So moved. Uh, there's two. So we'll say <laughs> Ms. Cobb and Ms. Brock. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next is our superintendent's report. Mr. Gill. All right, well, thank you. Uh, so obviously school's back in session after a break, and I hope everyone had a nice Christmas break and was able to spend some time with their family and friends. Um, as we've gotten back into school, I've been able to get out and visit a few schools and, and see some folks, and it seems like everyone's back in the groove and everything is going really well. Um, at, at the uh, midterm, uh, at the mid-year point, we always uh, do our I-Ready assessments in our middle and uh, elementaries, and so right now we're getting, collecting that data and taking a look at that. And at the uh, high school level, we're uh, taking a look at our transition readiness uh, information so we can make that second semester push and have a great second semester. So uh, those are the good things we have going on in the classroom itself. Uh, as you heard earlier, you know, it's January is school board uh, member recognition month and I certainly want to echo my uh, appreciation for our board. I think we have a, a, a wonderful board that really works together to try to benefit kids and, and uh, certainly deserving of all the honor accolades that you've received tonight but also several groups within our community and uh, within throughout our district and in the area have uh, made similar proclamations and dedications and, uh, and I certainly echo that and, uh, and share that as well. So wanted to mention that. But in addition to uh, the school board recognition month, today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. So I want to make sure that I give a big thank you to our local law enforcement, uh, all the officers in our community. We've got one back there. 
Uh, so thank you. And that, yeah, obviously that's you know, Richmond City, Berea City, uh, our uh, sheriff's uh, office, as we mentioned just a moment ago, they work with us on the property tax and a lot of other things, and also our state police. Uh, you know, these folks do so much for our schools with helping with traffic, helping with just the walkthroughs of the school, doing our routine safety checks, uh, responding to calls when we need things, uh, providing us with SROs. Uh, they do so much for us, but then they also do a whole lot for our community outside of you know, for our families that we, we deal with every day outside of school. Uh, and um, uh, one program I want to mention real quick is the Handle with Care program. I just want to highlight that for just a second. If, you haven't, if you're not familiar with that, the Handle with Care program, when our law enforcement officers respond to a call that involves children in the school system, they make a note in their system. That note then goes to the school system, and uh, we're able to know that there was a, some type of, of uh, you know, domestic issue or, or whatever at this home in the evening or over the weekend or over our Christmas break. And, and as I said, I went back, I was uh, out in the schools this week, and uh, particularly on Tuesday when our kids came back, uh, a couple of our schools uh, happened to be in there that morning, and they had kids in the counselor's office that the counselor was bringing them in and, and talking you know, to make sure that, uh, that the kids were okay and the kids didn't need anything because of issues that had happened at home over the holiday break. And, and in both of those situations, our counselors had, had already made calls home over the break, uh, even while they were on break, they were calling these homes and saying, you know, we, you know, checking on the kids and making sure everything's okay. So that has been a huge, um, um, it's made a huge impact on our ability to serve kids and, and serve those kids mm -hmm. that are, that are uh, you know, coming from, from challenging situations. So we really appreciate uh, them. And, you know, it doesn't take that much time, but it still takes time and effort for those officers to do that. And we want to say thank you to that. Uh, that's and that's my superintendent report. Very good. That's great. All right. Next is comments from the board. Do we have any comments tonight? I just say thank you for all the little gifts and yeah, I was gonna say the nice words because it's it is very much appreciated. It is. It is very much appreciated. Usually we get lots of calls or text mm -hmm. or you know direct messages of questions and things. So this is. Yeah. A very different side of it. It's exciting. Yes. So we appreciate that. I do. And I want to thank all of you guys for entrusting me to be your board chairman this year. So, Beth, thank you for your nomination. I appreciate that. Yeah. And thank you, Becky, for your service yes. last year. Yes. Wonderful job last year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Lori, looking forward to working with you as vice chair. Thank you. All right. Just make sure you're here every minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, so now we need to enter into executive session to discuss potential litigation for which disclosure will compromise um, what we're going in there about. So I need a motion to send us into executive session. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. So we are in executive session. So I need a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. I'll second. All right. The motion has been made by Mrs. Coyle, second by Mrs. Brock. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So now, motion carries. Oh, all right. Motion carries. I figured everyone. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm not used to saying all that. Okay. All right. So next, um, we are going to enter this resolution into the record, and I'm going to read the summary of the re of the re resolution. There we go. I can't speak. All right. Whereas the Madison County Board of Education has determined that. Madison County Public Schools has the responsibility to protect its students and take legal action against manufacturers, distributors, and sellers of electronic cigarettes and vaping products. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Madison County Board of Education that it authorizes attorney Ronald Johnson and his law firm, Hendy Johnson Vaughn and Emory of Louisville, Kentucky, to file a civil action against any appropriate parties to compensate Madison County Public Schools for damages suffered by Madison County Public Schools and its students. As a result of the manufacturer, marketing, sale, and use of electronic cigarettes and or vaping products and to seek any other appropriate relief, including injunctive relief to protect Madison County Public Schools students from vaping manufacturers and distributors. The Madison County Board of Education further authorizes the superintendent to sign all necessary contracts and other related documents on behalf of the Madison County Public Schools in the pursuit of any civil action. 
So I need a motion. So move. Is there a second? Second. All right. There's a motion on the floor by Mr. Rutherford and a second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Vote approved. All right. Okay. Thank you. Now, is that it for this? Sure. All right. So I need a motion on the floor to adjourn. So, so moved. Okay, you guys said that at the same time. So we'll <laughs> we've done that. Brock. We've done that twice tonight. We'll go with Miss Brock and then say goodbye, Miss Cobb. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It's approved. Ooh, do I get to? Oh, yeah. yes. We're adjourned. All right. We're adjourned. Yeah.